Hi, I'm author and speaker Robin Mead. This is the first video of the 10 Things God Wants You to Do Today series. You can find this series and my other series from my book club for my book, Fierce Fullness, titled Hope, Healing, and Perseverance on my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to my channel and then you'll be notified when a new video comes out. So what are we talking about today? Number one, communicate with God. So why do we communicate in general? Well, we communicate to build relationships, right? With our family, our friends, our colleagues at work, our customers, our community. Building relationships requires communication and it's no different with our relationship with God. Well, let's talk about just the communication loop in general so we we all know what we're talking about as far as communication so when we start out we have somebody named the sender let's say that's you or me and we want to send out a message we got to answer some questions we're going to say well why am i sending out this message who am i sending it to when does it need to go out what's it going to be about and how am i going to send it out oh that's our first step and then our second step is once we figure out all those W questions, right? Who, when, why, what, we've got to figure out the how. And the how refers to, here's a sender, you know, the how is the channel. So what kind of channels do we have for communication? Well, our channels for communication are email or Facebook Messenger or Instagram or uh, some people still write handwritten letters. Some people actually call people on the phone and talk to them. Can you believe that? Uh, or some people actually have time for face-to-face -face contact. Uh, lately, we've been meeting on uh, something called Zoom. Maybe you, uh, for work, you meet on WebEx or Skype. All these tools are tools that we use to communicate to people. And then when we're communicating, there's a sender, a channel, and a receiver. So the receiver is the person that you're communicating to, and they're receiving what you have to say. And you might think, well, well, that's it. That, that completes the communication loop. But no, it doesn't. Because communication is not complete until the receiver sends some feedback to the sender. So the feedback might be, you, if the sender said, hey, do you want to do this Saturday night? And the response is from the receiver is uh, no, but what about Friday night? That's a that's a response. They might say yes. They might say maybe. Those are all responses. It's all feedback, so it all counts for our feedback loop. So the other aspect of the communication loop that we have is noise. So noise is anything you can see. It's all encompassing here throughout our loop, and noise is anything that interrupts the intention of the communication. So it could be something like the sender is grouchy because they got up late or they're stuck in traffic and frustrated so they sent out you know a message and maybe the receiver also is stuck in traffic and, and unhappy or they're having a long day or um, maybe they're having a really great day and they're they're kind of taken aback by what the sender is sending because they're they're in a good mood, the sender's in a bad mood. You know, all different kinds of things can happen with noise. It's anything that interrupts the intended message that's coming across. So that's how we just communicate in general. Let's talk about how we communicate with God. So as senders sending communications to God, we communicate with God through one channel. So there's not email or Zoom or talking on the phone or face-to-face. -face. Remember that movie a few years ago that a God answering email? Yeah, that doesn't happen. The, the channel that we have to speak with God is prayer. And let me read some verses that, that go along with that. First Thess Thessalonians 5.17, pray without ceasing. Colossians 4.2, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Jeremiah 29, 12 and 13, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me 
when you seek me with all your heart. That's God telling us. That's, that's how we can find him. Um, 1 John 5.14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. You might say, well, how do I know if something's according to God's will? Well, is it something that's going to help you become more like Christ? Is it going to help you grow closer to God? Is it going to help you grow in the fruits of the Spirit? Those are all things that God wants for you. And God has some promises in his word that he says, these are some things I'm going to do for you. Those are all things that are according to his will. Uh, Luke 5, 16, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. So that verse is happening at a time in Jesus' ministry when things are really going well. And Jesus especially takes the time to withdraw from everything that's going on, all the activity, and pray. That's a good word for us. So... So let's take a look at our what our communication loop would look like communicating with God. So we have you, you're the sender. You got a why, you still got a why. Uh, when are you going to pray? And what are you going to pray about? But our channel is prayer, right? God is the receiver. And then our feedback loop comes from reading the Bible. Look at that. Uh, so God gives us feedback when we read the Bible and let him speak to us. Let me read you some verses that support this. Uh, John 15, 15. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what the master is doing. Uh, but I call you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. Amos 3, 7. For the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants and the prophets. So these verses say that God, the relationship with God is not mysterious. It's all laid out in scripture. God has made it, his book available so that we could get to know him because he wants a relationship with us. He wants to communicate with us. Uh, Jeremiah 1 12, then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. So what God's saying there is, uh, I got some promises, I got some things that I said were going to happen, and I myself am watching over my word to make sure they happen. He's not slacking. And then Psalm 119. So this whole entire chapter speaks about the benefits of reading and being instructed in life by God's word. The whole chapter. It's the longest chapter in the Bible, too. Not a coincidence, right? Okay, and so let's talk about the noise. So we still have some noise. God doesn't have any noise. So that's why the noise is just over here with us. So we have noise. So what are some things that affect us with noise? Well, how much, how much are you worrying as opposed to praying? How much are you talking to other people instead of reading your Bible? Those are things that interfere with your communication with God. And what's a way that we can combat that? Well... There's a really good way to combat that, actually. You can reduce your noise uh, if you pray before reading scripture. So before you seek to communicate something to God, pray over your scripture that you're reading. God, please tell me what I can do, uh, what, what I need to learn out of this. What can I do from this? Just pray and ask him. It's as simple as that. It's really, there's nothing more complicated to it than that. Um, and then also praying scripture back to God. So those promises we were talking about a couple minutes ago, we pray those back to the back to God. He, he hears that because we are aligning with what he said he was going to do. And he's watching over his word to perform it. So if you go to God and say, God, I know you promised this in your word, and I just don't see how it's working out. I just don't see it. Please show me. Please give me wisdom. That's another promise that God makes. Uh, and help me. Help me know. So let me read you some verses that go along with this. Psalm 32, 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. So God's promising to talk back to us to give us that feedback right hebrews 4 12 for the word of god is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the division of the soul and spirit of joints and marrow 
and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart so God can reveal to you why you're thinking or feeling this way and what the path forward is. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So that's why God um, gives us his word so that we have a relationship with him so we know what his promises are so that we can grow and be more like Christ and be closer to him. I hope this helps. God bless you.